North Carolina congressman and a member of the House Appropriations Committee, David Price, to talk about all of this. Congressman, thanks for joining us. Uh, you had a chance to Thank hear you. that re report from Rich Edson there, and he kind of goes the back and forth between Comey and the president that's that's occurring right now. And I, I feel like it's, it's kind of remarkable, the former FBI director, such a powerful investigator, coming out now uh, from, from this sort of moralistic stance, uh, trying to shame the president. Uh, what are your, your thoughts on that? When we, when we think about investigators supposed to be, you know, impartial as they're conducting these investigations, and now to, to hear this language from Comey so openly. Well, the, the point uh, about how uh, uh, the president weaves this alternative web of facts and people get caught up in it and there's, there's no way out that's, uh, that where, where one's dignity and integrity remain intact. I, I do think that's uh, uh, I do think that's a realistic observation. I think of Secretary Nielsen and the circumstances under which she left uh, Homeland Security, for example, and there are many, many more examples. But speaking of alternative uh, takes on reality, this um, the, the, these illusions, this kind of wishful thinking about uh, King Jong Un and, and the situation in North Korea really just takes your breath away. And uh, I, uh, the, the, the fact that they're just ratcheting up these tests, these battlefield weapons, and now these uh, short-range weapons, and uh, stopping short of, uh, of the out-and-out -out, um, violation of uh, the promises that were supposedly made. But, but, but still, the president, uh, the president uh, not only tolerates this, but continues to uh, entertain these illusions, perpetrate these illusions about this uh, this brutal dictator and, uh, and and how one would possibly hope to get an agreement in this uh, situation. Yeah, it's I been mean, interesting no to hear even uh, those that are close to the president talking about sort of his, his style as far as developing relationships with world leaders, particularly world leaders right now, particularly that are, that are so deeply right. criticizing, as you mentioned, uh, uh, the, you know, these despots, these dictators. Shifting things back to uh, uh, Special Counsel Mueller. <clears throat> You, would you like to see him testi testify before Congress? You had written um, that, that that's something you'd like to hear, and, and you want to hear from his conclusions directly. What is it that you're looking for? Well, I think it's essential that we hear from, uh, from Mueller, uh, especially now that we know that uh, he uh, objected strongly to the way his uh, report was characterized by the Attorney General, and that the Attorney General essentially uh, 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 lied about that before the Congress about the about you know gave a very very false misleading impression about uh, Mueller's acceptance of his four-page supposed summary of the of the report. We need to untangle that, and of course, there's a lot about the Mueller report itself that uh, that we need to understand more fully. The I, I agree evidence. that it has uh, to be untangled. There's all kinds of reasons I think some to of the talk language, about Mueller. You know, when you when you talk about uh, uh, Speaker Pelosi talking about a crime when it, concerning Barr, and you talk about the language being untangled, I think it does need to be untangled because the question that was asked was about the, a team versus Mueller directly. And I think you can, well, there's so much talk about semantics in, in, in Washington, uh, you know, whether it's wall or fence or. That's a so kind word. I'd call it hair splitting. I'd, I'd call it hair splitting and I'd call it uh, and I, and I deliberately think misleading. Some people, some people <laughs> could. And then, you know, but, but is Mueller the same as Mueller's team? And, and I, I, I think that that discussion will go on. Yeah. But, but ultimately, you know, obviously, like you say, it, various parties want to get answers. Shifting to infrastructure, because I didn't want to let infrastructure go no. before I get a chance to talk with you. It's so big. Uh, the, uh, the president and the Democratic leadership working out this $2 trillion deal. Uh, I guess the big question, of course, is will it come to pass? Is it enough? But the president did tweet about this, saying there's nothing easy about a U.S. infrastructure plan, especially when our great country has spent an astounding $7 trillion in the Middle East over the last 19 years. But I'm looking hard at a bipartisan plan of $1 to $2 trillion, badly needed, uh, $2 trillion, you know, is that just a start? Will we actually see this happen? There's such a battle in Washington over everything, you know, DACA, Supreme Court nominations. Just the list has been so voracious and so long. Can we get a compromise on infrastructure? Well, you're right. This is a more positive topic, or at least I hope it is, because for years now, We've looked at this, uh, this need for repairing the country's infrastructure, investing in uh, a diverse infrastructure for the future. We've looked on, on that as, a, as an economic imperative for the country and something that we should be able to get together on since we, uh, since we all talk about it a lot. Uh, the president has been a disappointment so far in terms of the, of the kind of non-plan that he put forward. 
But like a lot of other people, I was uh, I was looking very closely at the talks this past week with uh, Chuck and Nancy and the, and the, and the president, and uh, I'm. I'm hopeful that we can uh, break out of this. There's going to have to be some way of paying for this. That's always been the, the challenge before with our Republican colleagues. They just aren't willing to uh, commit to that. I am chairman of the uh, Transportation and Housing Appropriations Subcommittee. Right. And, I, and I have to say that we are on our way to doing a nice down payment on infrastructure. We didn't get much help from the president on that. In fact, the president's budget inexplicably actually cut infrastructure yeah. I mean, so much about politics is about funding and spending and where all the money goes. Uh, uh, Congressman Price, yeah. thank you so much for talking with us today. We're, we're running out of time, but I really appreciate it. We had a fabulous discussion. Thank you.